The Anzac spirit came to be from the actions of the soldiers 100 years ago and is still alive due to its influence on Australians and our serving defence personnel. World War I, also known as the War to End All Wars or the Great War of 1914, was sparked due to the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand, who was heir to the throne of the Austro-Hungarian Empire on the 28th of June 1914. One month later, on the 28th of July, Austria-Hungary declared war on Serbia, the country which held the association which murdered the Archduke. This declaration was the first of many declarations to come, and soon, Britain had declared war on Germany. When Andrew Fisher became Australia's Prime Minister in 1914, he immediately promised Britain Australia's support to the last man and the last shilling. They initially pledged 20,000 men, but an extraordinary rush to enlist all around the country came to 50,000 men. On the 25th of April 1915, the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps, also known as Anzacs, arrived at Gallipoli, the most well-known Anzac location to Australians. The Anzacs had missed the designated landing beach and had no idea of the terrain or Turkish troop disposition they would have faced on this cove they had instead landed. What made this particular attack so incredible was that in Gallipoli, from April 25th, 1915 to January the 8th, 1916, there was an estimated 8,159 to 8,709 casualties, yet the Anzacs did not retreat. They pushed forward and dealt with all the hardship that came their way with the five qualities all Australians admire. Endurance, courage, ingenuity, humour, and mateship. This is how the Anzac spirit came to be. Approximately 50,000 Australians were sent to Gallipoli, and although the legal age requirement was 18, the youngest known enlistment was aged 14. Australians were excited for an adventure and also to serve their country. They did not know that they would be dealing with things they could not imagine. They experienced extreme weather conditions which meant they had to endure snow and rain. This resulted in mud and the flooding of their trenches. The winds along the Gallipoli Peninsula were quite strong and when the weather did change, it wasn't uncommon for summer to reach 40 degrees. The Anzacs also had to worry about the supplies which had to be shipped in. Their diet was jam and tea, bully beef and hard biscuits. The water they received was scarce and strictly rationed. The combination of heat and a lack of sanitation also made the outbreaks of diseases while they were plagued with rats, flies and fleas. The remarkable thing is that while being engulfed with all these hardships, the Anzacs kept their spirits, formed bonds and built themselves a reputation as brave fighters and heroes. The Anzac spirit is still alive today, over 100 years on and going strong. The Anzacs and their spirit are synonymous with the identity of each Australian. The Anzac spirit can be defined by both the actions of the Anzacs and the five qualities they all showed. Endurance, courage, ingenuity, humour and mateship. This spirit lives on as every year on the 25th of April, all Australians commemorate and remember those who served for our country. Anzac Day is a day where the Anzac spirit is greatly shown and is relived by current Australians, especially the quality of mateship, as we all come together at the dawn service to be thankful. The Anzac spirit also lives on through current and past defence personnel and their families who have experienced both war and its effects firsthand. Personally, I have experienced the Anzac spirit through my grandpa, who served in the Air Force for 25 years. From February 1971 to February 1972, he served in Vietnam. He supported the soldiers there by doing catering and escorting. My grandpa greatly possesses one quality the Anzacs had, mateship. While serving, he made friends with other serving Australians and locals, who he still talks to now. Every year, my grandpa goes to a dawn service without fail. He says that, as servicemen, we always recognise the Anzac spirit on Anzac Day. And he thinks this is because we're Australian, and a lot of Australians were killed over there. My dad also helped to keep the Anzac spirit alive, as while he served with the Royal Australian Air Force, he had to work in Afghanistan on two occasions. On one occasion, he had the opportunity to participate in the Anzac Day ceremony. My dad said, having the honour to participate in a dawn service while deployed in a conflict zone was a humbling and rewarding life experience. 
Dad said the spirit of the Anzac is very well and truly alive on deployed operations and the attributes were displayed on a daily basis. The Anzac spirit was also kept alive through schools, scouts, girl guides and cadets. These all encouraged learning about the Anzacs and participating in events such as dawn services and parades which sparked interest and appreciation for the new generation. Having had close family experience a similar hardship and hearing the stories makes you appreciate the Anzacs. It also helps you realise how incredible it was that they kept such high spirits in such a tough time. Knowing all of this allows us to appreciate the Anzacs more and even aspire to be like them. And that's what keeps the Anzac spirit alive.